we are now going to count the number of weeks that were assigned to each gen. In other words, we are going to perform gen quantification. We are going to use feature count to do this. And this time, what we are going to do is that we will use the BAM files. That's what we are going to use for the next activity. So and let's continue. So we will call feature counts and then we will supply the BAM files to it. This one and then this one. Before we do that, let's first create a directory. So we will say make the counts. So this directory is where we will store the outputs. So now we have a directory created. So we will say feature counts and then we will say dash T8 to specify the number of threads. We will now specify dash S0. Dash S is used to specify the strandedness. So here, zero means unstranded. With the strandedness, you can have one of three values. Zero for unstranded, one for forward, and then negative one for reverse stranded. All right, so unstranded, you represent with zero. Forward stranded, you represent with one. Reverse stranded, you represent with minus one. All right, so that's how you need to do it. With the strandedness, you can estimate it by visualizing the BAM files. So if you visualize using tools like IGV, it's possible to estimate or identify or have an idea of the strandedness. And you can use that to specify the appropriate value. There are also tools available that can help you to estimate the strandedness. All right, so one such tool is made available or let's say it's made mention of in the galaxy tutorial page the tutorial that i base this very tutorial on so that galaxy tutorial page has a tool that also allows you to estimate the strandedness so just make sure to check that tutorial out and you'll find the tool there all right so there are other approaches that ideally and these two should serve as a starting point for you all right now we need to specify Another thing, we are dealing with paired and width, so we need to specify dash p, then dash dash count read pairs. We also need to specify the feature of interest, so that's dash c exon. We want to use the exon. I think that's even the default. With the identifier, we are going to use gen id, so we say dash gen gen underscore id we are also going to specify the minimum mapping quality so we say dash q we will use 10. we are also going to specify the annotation file all right so here we are referring to the dtf file so the dtf file we can find it in the data slash ref slash dm6 dot gtf all right so we are going to specify it so to do that we say dash a and we say data slash ref and we specify the gtf file so this is it we also need to specify something else we need the outputs all right so outputs where the output file should be all right so that's how we are going to specify it we say dash o and we specify where the output file should be stored. So it's going to be in counts. Remember, we created a directory called count. So we are going to specify that's there. All right. So we say count slash, and we have to give a file. Now, because we want to get a read count for this sample, GSM461177 the output file should reflect that name all right so we are going to say gsm461177 dot counts that's going to be the file name all right so that's it so count slash gsm461177 dot counts that'll be the output file name so this output file will have the information okay for the read count for that particular sample all right now we also need to specify the bam file so the bam file that we need to specify 
we should have it here. So we have to specify. So we say mapped slash and we specify the BAM file. All right, so there's the BAM file. So now we will run feature counts. Perfect. So now feature counts is doing its work. All right, so it's currently working. Now this is fast. Okay, so again, feature count has done its work. So depending on your computing power, it will take some time or to be fast. All right, so this one was pretty fast. It was very, very quick. So we have the information we need here. So let's proceed. So we will clear the screen and continue. Okay, so now when we do an ls into the counts directory, we are going to find the output files for this sample. So we have that here. All right. So we can just do a cut into the count. Let's see how it looks like. So I'll just say cut count slash gsm dot count. Okay. The four file here. So gsm four six one one seven seven dot count. So this will give you everything here. So you have lots of information here. All right. So it tells you the counts. There are other information here. So I will actually leave the documentation to feature counts. Okay, so that you can read more about the outputs, but we are going to explain them also later on. Okay, so this is how it is. Now for the summary file, which is also good if you want to get an overview, that one too is here. I'll just say cuts, counts, I'll specify the file. Okay, so we have dot counts, dot summary. So this will display the count file. So this gives us a summary. So we have assigned reads. This is a number you have unassigned, unmapped, unassigned read tab, etc. Unassigned multi mapping. So, so we have all this here to let you know the various um, counts for the assigned features, the features that feature count identified, and the read counts that have been assigned to them. So, this is for this sample. So, this particular one is possible to also visualize, all right? So uh, we can visualize this but before we visualize let's run the next sample and then we can visualize and see what that also is okay so you we'll run the other sample which is 1180 and after that we are going to visualize the re results for both and then we can see how a uh, feature can also make things easy for you when combine reports all right so let's clear the screen and then let's run feature count for the other sample okay so i'm clearing the screen and then i'll recall the feature count command for the first sample so this is it so since we are going to do this we are going to specify another sample we need to clear this and also need to clear the output all right so we are clearing both so since we are now going to run for the sample 1180, so dash O will change and then the input file will change. All other options remain the same. All right. So it's only the output file and the inputs that changes here. So for output, I'll say count slash GSM461180 dot counts. And then the input will be mapped slash gsm 461180 and we specify the bound file so let's run this command also perfect that has also been done so let's clear the screen let's ls into counts and we are going to find that one also here all right so we have them also here now let me also say that the Outputs, okay. This output, the counts we have, both summary and then the main counts. You can visualize. Or uh, before I even talk about visualizing, let me say you can view using a spreadsheet software. I will show you how that is done. But first, let's just look at the summary for the sample four six one one eight zero. So I'll just do a head. Or I can even say cut because for the summary, it's not that much. But this one head so i'll say head count 
gsm forces1a0.coms this one i'll just do ahead because you have a lot of information so this is it all right let's clear the screen let's look at the summary also so the summary down i'll say cuts count gsm 1180.count the summary that will give you the summary also so we have them here so i repeat you can also view these files using spreadsheet software all right so we shall view it spreadsheet software later on okay so in the course of the video in the course of the tutorial we are going to do that now let's take a look at something so you have this we have two samples by the way so we have read count for two samples you could also have a situation whereby you have more than two files or two outputs i.e more than two samples all right so in that situation it will be useful to be able to aggregate this report into a single report or a single file that you can read all right so what we are going to do next is to aggregate these two reports and then we are going to view them as a single report using multi so multi allows us to aggregate our reports so that we can view them and also compare them to one another all right so it's it's very convenient to do some of these things so for those who are curious, so this is the home page for MultiQC. I've covered some tutorials on it, by the way, so you can check them out. So it helps you to aggregate report from different bioinformatics tools, okay, or from different bioinformatics analysis, all right? So it combines them into a single report and you can always view them. All right, so not just a, a single file or not just, not just a single tool, let me put it that way, not just a single tool. You can have report from different tools in different files and you can combine all of them into a single file and then read. All right, so MultiQC automatically identifies the kinds of reports and then it formats it accordingly so that you can have your reports and then um, read them. Or basically explore or examine or interpret them so it helps to make things easy for you when it comes to aggregating reports or results so the link to this tool is in the description box i'm in the documentation for multi so you can check it out later on let's get back to our data so what we are going to do is to aggregate these two reports together all right the report for the two samples using multi qc all right so to Aggregate report. Let's say you have your feature count reports in a directory. So this is my directory, and I have my feature count reports. All right. So I have this, and then this. These are the summary. Okay. So these are the ones that feature count will use. So let's say I have this, and I want to aggregate using feature counts out, and not feature count. So let's just say I want to aggregate using multi QC. All right. So to aggregate it to MultiQC, I just have to say MultiQC. And then I will specify the input. So here my inputs are in the count directory. So I'll say count and I'll say star dot summary. All right, so you can also say star. MultiQC will automatically identify the, the, the files for you. All right, but in this case we want to be specific so we are using the summary file so that's what i'm specifying here so i'll say multi qc count slash star dot summary so that means all files that's end with dot summary i have two of them so i'll run this command and then multi qc will aggregate them for me okay so it tells me it has found two files or let's say two reports so once it identifies them, it will aggregate them for you and you have your output. So that's what I have. All right. So once it's done, I can check it out. Let's do that now. With my file manager. So this is the file. So I can open it. And when I open it, I'm going to see my reports. Okay. So I have my two samples, 1177 and 1180. So I have them here and then we have the plots. So it tells you the plots. We have this plot here. We have some colors and it gives you the 
meaning of the colors so here the blue here is for assigned reads we also have on map multi unassigned multi mapping which is here all right so let me just enlarge it a bit we have unassigned multi mapping black unassigned no features you have this color unassigned ambiguity so you have them here so this allows you to also easily understand and even sometimes interpret your reports all right so you have your visualization so now it becomes easy to interpret it becomes easy to study it becomes easy to understand what is going on here all right so and also because it's a plot we are also able to compare because of how it has been displayed for us so we can compare so if you compare let's say this two samples we see that with these two samples so here assign number of reads if you hover your cursor it gives you the number a27644 here it says 887437 so that that's how it is all right so this gives you a, an overview and it will help you and in some cases even enable you to identify if there are issues with your data or not all right so that is what we have for the multi qc all right with respect to feature count reports all right